let's see this question <coughs> a bullet of mass 20 gram traveling horizontally with a speed of 500 meter per second passes through a wooden block of mass 10 kg initially at rest on a level surface the bullet emerges with a speed of 100 meter per second and block slides 20 centimeter on the surface before coming to rest find the friction coefficient between block and the surface right so it is the block is of 10 kg so bullet strikes this mass penetrate to this body and comes out with a velocity of 100 meter per second bullet enters into the block with a speed of 500 it gets slowed down and comes out with 500 meter per second so before collision before the bullet strikes the uh, block we can conserve the linear momentum there is no external force acting on the body in the horizontal direction whatever force you have between this bullet and the block it is an internal force if I consider the two body as system so before collision the only momentum you have is the momentum of the bullet that is 0 0.02 kg into 500 and after collision the momentum of the system is the bullet is moving with 100 and the block moves with 10 into V V we have to find out right so what is V this is equal to 10 and this is 2 plus 10 V so V is 0 0.8 meter per second V is 0 0.8 meter per second so block start moving with 0 0.8 meter per second right when this block is moving it will experience a friction force in backward direction that will be a dynamic friction you have n and 10 g acting so this friction force is going to be mu n and uh, n is what there is no vertical motion so n minus 10 g is 0 so n g is 10 g or mu into 10 into g so that will create a deacceleration of mu g right that will create a deacceleration of mu g and it comes at rest it comes at rest after traveling 20 centimeter what does it mean it means this is your initial velocity it comes at rest after traveling a distance of see your Final velocity is 0, v square minus 2as is 0. Final velocity square is, initial velocity square minus 2as equal. So, final velocity is 0, so v square must be equal to 2as. On the acceleration, that is, deacceleration suffered by the block is going to be v square upon 2as, that is 0 0.8 into 0 0.8 into twice of 0 0.2. So this will be 4 and this will be 1.6 and that should be mu g, right? That should be mu g. So if I take g equal to 10 centimeter per 10 meter per second square, so mu comes out to be 0 0.16. That should be mu. That is going to be the coefficient of friction, friction coefficient between block and the surface. This is your surface. That is the friction coefficient between block and the surface. That's a very easy question. Now, let's move to the next question. See this question. A ball of mass M hits the floor with a speed V, making an angle of incidence theta with the normal. The coefficient of friction, coefficient of restitution is E. Find the speed of reflected ball and the angle of reflection of the ball. In fact, you are given u and theta, and we have to find out v dash. You are given v and theta, in fact, and you have to find v dash and theta dash. This is the incident ball, and this is a reflected ball. Here the ball is incident, and here the ball is getting reflected. So we have to find out v dash and theta dash of the reflected ball. Okay, 
So let's find out the uh, let's find out this v dash and theta dash. What is given is u and t, v and theta, right? See, in this case, when the ball is colliding, this is the ball over here. If you see the ball, ball experiencing force in which direction? Ball will experience the force in which direction? So the surface is going to exert a normal reaction in this direction. Right? This normal reaction do not have any component in the horizontal direction. This normal reaction do not have any component in the horizontal direction. It means there is no force acting on the ball in the horizontal direction. It means what? If I consider ball as a system, the momentum of the ball in horizontal direction will be conserved. Since there is no force acting on the ball in horizontal direction, momentum of the ball in horizontal direction should be conserved. It means your momentum of the ball in horizontal direction after collision is this. And this will be the momentum of the ball before collision in horizontal direction. Mv sin theta is the momentum of the ball in horizontal direction before collision. Right? So from here you get one equation. By conserving the linear momentum of the ball in horizontal direction. Right? Second equation. Second equation you get it from this E. We have seen E is V2 dash minus V1 dash V2 minus V1. But I have something to tell you at this point. See, we derive this expression. We derive this expression for the case of head-on collision. For the case of head-on collision. First of all, what is head-on and what is oblique? Let me tell you. What is head-on collision? And what is oblique collision? See in head-on collision, your this body, if the two bodies are moving with M1 and M2, then the line joining the two body, line joining the center of two body, the velocities lie along the line joining the center of two body. The velocity lie along the line joining the center of the two body. So what happens is when they collide, the impulsive force which act is also along the same line. It means when after collision, what's going to happen is the velocity will get slowed down. Velocity will get slowed down. Or if M2 is very, very heavy, this V1 will get reversed. But the line of motion is not going to change. The line of motion is not going to change. The line of motion is going to remain same, right? Line of motion does not change. Line of motion remains same. So that's the head-on collision. The velocities of the body lie along the line joining the two body. Velocity of the body lie along the line joining the two body. So in case of head-on collision, the line of motion you may have M1 getting rebound, reversed back, but it won't go like this. It won't change the line of motion. The motion will be along the same line. The motion will remain one-dimensional throughout. Motion will remain one-dimensional throughout. That's called head-on collision. That's called head-on collision. In case of oblique collision, If this body M1 is moving with V1 and this is V2 and say this is the line joining the two body. So you are finding that the velocities are not along the line joining the two body. So when they collide what happens is you have V1, you have V2. And the normal reaction, the impulsive force which acts, the impulsive force acts in this direction. In the collide, impulsive force acts along the line joining the centers. M to exert impulsive force N on M1, 
in this direction and M1 exert impulsive force N in this direction. Right? So this impulsive force has got a component in direction opposite to V1. So that component, if I if suppose this is theta, if suppose this is theta. Uh, I think this is also theta. So M cos theta is going to slow down V1. That's not going to change the line of motion. It can slow down V1. But N sine theta is going to develop a velocity in this direction. V1 say V1 dash. It's going to develop or V1 double dash. So it's going to develop a velocity in this direction. It will slow down V1 but it will develop a velocity in this direction. And the net velocity can go like this, right? Here, one component of n, that is n cos theta, is going to make v2 faster. But n sin theta is going to develop velocity in component in this direction. And net velocity can be something like this. It means the body came along the same line. Body were moving in the same direction. But one body turned this way, the other body turned this way. Means this body is going in this direction, this body will start traveling in this direction. So what you find is the line of motion changes. That's called oblique collision. That's called oblique collision. Right? Why I'm discussing over here is because, see, we derive this expression, derive this expression for oblique, sorry, head-on collision. When you apply this expression in oblique collision, then V2 dash is the component of the velocity of the second body after collision along the line join their centers. Get your point? V2 dash is the component of the velocity of the second body after collision along line join their centers or along the line of force. Right? Along the line of force. V1 dash is the component of velocity of the first body after collision along the line of force. I'll, I'll use it over here. You'll understand it better. V2 is the component of the velocity of the second body before collision along line of the force. This line of force. This is line of force. right? This is going to be the line of force. Line join the center is the line of force. The impulsive force acts along line join the centers. V1 dash is the component of the velocity of the first body along line join their centers. Right? So because we derive it for head on collision. So when you apply it to oblique collision, you apply it like this. I'll 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 help I'll tell you how we apply it over here. See. And have all this. See here. See, in this case, your first body, if I regard this as the first body. This is going to be the second body. Second body means Earth. This surface is the second body. So surface is too heavy. So velocity after collision of the surface is zero. And V1 dash. What is V1 dash? This is first body. See, the line of force is this. Line of force is lying in a vertical direction. The two bodies, that is ball and the surface, interact along this direction. Right? So when I take V1 dash, that is velocity of the first body after collision, I'll take the component of this velocity V1 dash along the line of force, that is V1 cos theta dash. That is V1 cos theta dash. Since it is lying in upward direction, I am taking it as positive. So it is V1, sorry, V dash, V dash, not V1, V dash cos theta dash. And V2 is 0 before collision of the surface was at rest. And what is V1? Velocity of the first body before collision along the line of force means this is theta so it is v cos theta and minus v cos theta in fact because this direction is negative if this direction is positive this direction is negative so it is minus v cos theta so this gives me a second equation that is v dash cos theta dash is ev cos theta, ev cos theta, the second equation, right? So if I is, oh, I got this. So if I square and add, or if suppose I take the, if I take 
the divide, in fact, 1 divided by 2, I'll get tan theta dash as tan theta by E. And if I square and add this 2, I take under root, then I'll get V dash equals to, um, what should I write, V sine square theta and e square cos square theta that is a v dash that's your v dash v dash is this all right v dash is going to be this this is your v dash okay so that's that's about something about oblique collision right we have two kind of we have two kind of uh, collisions oblique collision and head on collision i'll go for the next question right let me see this question for you see the question is a projectile is fired with a speed u at a angle theta of the horizontal field the coefficient of restitution of collision between the projectile and the field is e how far from the starting point does projectile make a second collision with the field this is the question how far from the starting point the projectile makes a second collision with the field. This is very similar to the last question. Let me draw the figure first. This is the figure, right? Here we are finding that the projectile is fired at the velocity u. This is the velocity of projection. This is the velocity of projection. This is theta. So it is supposed to land again at the same angle theta right is it not it's supposed to land at the same angle theta is it yes it should right it's going to land at the same angle theta because you know the horizontal velocity remains same and the vertical component of the velocity will also remain same in magnitude so when horizontal and vertical remains same this angle will also be same. There is no loss of energy anywhere. Now it is going to rebound at an angle say theta dash and suppose it came with the velocity u and suppose it come out with velocity u dash right u dash. So okay so if I conserve the linear momentum of the body along horizontal, I'll get mu cos theta or mu cos mu dash cos theta, the velocity of the body along horizontal, mu dash cos theta equals to mu cos theta, that is u dash cos theta dash is u cos theta, right? And then I can apply principle of superposition, sorry, not principle of superposition, coefficient of restitution. So that will give me V2 dash, V2, see if I take this as body number 2, the surface and the projectile as body number 1, this is 0 and V1 dash is U dash, sine theta dash and this is 0 and this becomes minus u sine theta so that comes as u dash sine theta dash equals to u sine theta u sine theta okay so this is 1 and this is 2 Okay, so we have to find out so what is R1 and what's R2? You have the formula. What is the formula? Formula is range is the horizontal velocity that is u cos theta into time of flight. Time of flight is 2u sin theta. I'll advise you, you just revise projectile, right? So it is 2u square 
sin theta cos theta upon g and the u square sin 2 theta upon g sin 2 theta upon g you must remember something like say uh, what is horizontal velocity horizontal velocity u cos theta the vertical velocity is given by u sin theta minus gt right initially the velocity u sin theta but as a function of time this is the vertical velocity when it will reach the highest position and vertical velocity is going to become zero and that time taken for the vertical velocity to become zero is u sin theta by g and thereafter it is at highest position and then it takes same time to come back to this position when you are uh, <coughs> it comes at the bottom so it takes the same this is time of ascent you can say I'm just revising your knowledge so it is time of ascent so time of descent is also same time of descent is equal to time of ascent right so time of flight comes out to be time of flight is how much 2u sin theta by z right and uh, x means the horizontal distance covered by the projectile is given by u cos theta into t and y is given by u sin theta into t minus half gt square half gt square see the range 2 r2 will be what the horizontal velocity u cos theta dash into 2u sin theta dash upon g that comes to be u dash cos theta dash is how much you see here that is u cos theta and u dash sin theta dash is how much eu sin theta to eu sin theta upon g that is eu square sin 2 theta upon g right so if i want the distance of see here the question is how far from the starting point this is starting point does the projectile max a second collision with the field that is the here is the second collision with the projectile max with the field so it is equal to distance from the starting point is r1 plus r2 that is u square sine 2 theta plus z is eu square sine 2 theta z and this is 1 plus e u square sine 2 theta upon g that is the distance of this point from the starting point right so that's the distance okay so this is how we solve this problem <coughs> see this question a ball falls on inclined plane of inclination theta from height h this is height h above the point of impact and makes an elastic collision with coefficient restitution equal to e where will it hit the plane again see this question here when it comes to hit this plane for the first time the velocity with which it hits is going to be 2gh and then it will rebound right it rebounds this was the velocity with which it hit and then it rebounds the force along which your the force will act in this direction the normal reaction is the impulsive force is going to act in this direction right so if I talk if the ball is here ball is here there is negligible force the forces or I can say I can conserve the linear amount of the ball let me take the coordinate system first that will be easier let me take the coordinate system suppose I take this as the suppose 
you suppose I take this as x axis say this is x axis and this is y this is your y right if I call it x and I call it y so this is theta so this will also be theta and this is also going to be theta this is also going to be theta so if this is v let's suppose this is v dash and let's suppose this is theta dash right so can I say that the linear moment of the ball along x just before collision and just after collision is equal see the impulsive force which act on the ball in this direction do not have any component towards x impulsive force which act on the ball along y direction do not have any component along x see you have a force which has got a component along x that is mg but mg is not an impulsive force mg is not an impulsive force if i am talking about linear moment of the ball just before collision just after collision along x then between just before and just after the time interval is fraction of seconds the time interval between just before and just after is fraction of seconds in that fraction of second the impulsive force do create a change in momentum but mg which is not an impulsive force is not going to create a significant change in linear momentum along x mg sin theta is there but mg sin theta is not an impulsive force so that's not going to create any much change any significant change in the linear momentum just before and just after collision get your point so to a fair degree of approximation i can assume linear moment of the ball just before and just after collision along x axis to be same that is you can write uh, what I can write is mv dash sine theta dash mv sine theta right mv dash sine theta dash is mv sine theta now if the ball is here say the ball is here at this point then the acceleration which ball undergo is g so g has got a component one component along x j is z cos theta so along y it has got one component along x right it has got a component along x uh, am i right yes yeah, I'm right. So, the other two components. It means the ball will get accelerated in x direction as well as y direction. Unlike your projectile on a flat surface, where along x direction, the velocity of the ball remains same. But here, the velocity in horizontal direction is going to increase, whereas velocity in vertical direction is going to fall. And I can write the equation that is vy is i can write v dash cos theta dash minus g cos theta t and vx is v dash sin theta dash plus g sin theta t when theta is zero the equation becomes equation of the plane equation on a flat surface projectile on a flat surface for that theta is zero right so but this is in general equation for the inclined plane i hope you are getting it this g cos theta is going to deaccelerate the ball in y direction and this g sin theta is going to accelerate the ball in x direction now if i write y y is going to be uh, what i can write is v dash cos theta dash t 
प्लस हाफ जी कॉस्टीटा टी स्क्वेर प्लस कांस्टेंट बट वाई जीरो एट इक्वल जीरो सो कांस्टेंट बिल्कुल जीरो एक्स एक्स इज वी डेस साइन टी डेट एस टी प्लस हाफ जी साइन टीटा टी स्क्वेर प्लस कांस्टेंट बट दैट कांस्टेंट बिल्कुल जीरो बिल्कुल जीरो कल एक्स इज जीरो एट इक्वल जीरो नाउ what they are asking you where it will hit the plane again first of all let's find out the time of flight first of all let's find the time of flight what is the time of ascent when do you think the vertical component of the velocity becomes zero when do you think this velocity becomes zero this velocity becomes zero at t equals to v dash cos theta dash upon g cos theta right so time of flight comes to be Twice of time of ascent, time of flight is twice the time of ascent. That is, v dash cos theta dash upon v cos theta. And during this period, this x is going to be. That is, an x. This is what you have to find out. The distance covered by this projectile in this time t. This is the distance, right? This is the distance in which we are interested in. This distance. So this distance x. If I put this time of flight over here, that will give you this distance. That is, v dash sine theta dash upon. Oh, sorry. Into two v dash cos theta dash upon g cos theta plus half. G sine theta into four v dash square cos square theta dash upon g square cos square theta. Now from here we are getting something, right? Oh, you get one equation only. We need one more equation. In fact, one more equation is going to come from E. Got one equation as v dash sine theta dash equals to v sine theta, and need one more equation. So let's generate one more equation from coefficient of restriction. That is v two dash minus v one dash v two minus v one. So the wedge is at rest, so I write zero, and v one dash is how much? Velocity component v one dash velocity component after collision of the first body along the line of force. This is line of force. That is, v one dash, cos theta dash, and uh, velocity component of the first body before collision, a long line of force that is minus v cos theta. So you have v dash cos theta dash as e v cos theta, right? So let's put it everything over here. V dash sin theta dash is v sin theta. And two v dash cos theta dash is e v cos theta. So that becomes g cos theta. That is four v dash cos square theta dash is your e square v square cos square theta dash into g square cos square theta. That gives you what? This cos theta cos theta will cancel out. This cos square theta cos square theta will cancel out. So it becomes two e v square sine theta by g plus four e square v square sine theta upon two g. So this will cancel out, right? When you cancel out, so what do I get? I get two e v square sine theta two e v square into one plus e upon c, and your v square is how much? V square is two g h two g h sine theta one plus e. Upon g, so g g will cancel out. What do I get? Two e one plus e 
or I say it for e1 plus e h sin theta in case of elastic collision in case of elastic collision your uh, e is 1 and your this becomes equal to the distance traveled l becomes equal to I'll call it l so that becomes equal to 8 h sin theta right in case of elastic collision 8 h sin theta okay so this is uh, this is about collision right I'll take one more two more questions in fact right okay thank you very much <laughs> now I'll discuss with you a general method of solving the question on oblique collision how we can solve oblique collision see uh, in the last few cases we saw that we saw the oblique collision in fact but one of the surface was a infinite surface like one of the surf one of the body was surface in fact we saw this kind of cases this is also a case of oblique collision right like this mass falling and then going like this so this is also a case of oblique collision but one of the body is static one of the bodies infinite is continuous is kind of surface it's not a kind of a point body but now I'll be seeing a case where you will have two bodies and they are free to move uh, after collision and they may be moving before collision also so let me take a general case right of oblique collision that's extremely important see for oblique collision one of the body has to be a rigid body you can't have two point bodies Right. One of the body has to be a rigid body. One of the body must have some dimension. It cannot be that both the body are dimensionless. No. One body has to have some dimension. So let me consider two rigid bodies having some dimension. Say sphere, two sphere, two hard balls. Right. Let me draw them. See there are two bodies. Say one is moving with say velocity v1. Other moves with say velocity v2 right they are moving on a horizontal surface these two bodies are moving see their velocities are not along line joining the their velocities are not along line joining their centers if I draw a line joining the centers you can see these velocities are not along line join their centers if these velocities are along line joining the centers then it will be a head-on collision so we are taking a case of oblique collision suppose v1 is get a v2 so these two bodies say this is of mass uh, say m1 the mass m2 body number one body number two so as the time passes on since v1 is greater than v2 these two this m1 will approach m2 and a time will come when it will collide when the two body is going to collide so during collision let's draw a figure where i'll show the two body collide and what happens then we can see these bodies are colliding now they are colliding one is having velocity say v1 other is having velocity v2 so they have collided and when they collide body number 2 that is m2 and m1 m2 is going to exert a, a impulsive force on m1 in this direction and M1 is going to exert impulsive force on M2 in this direction, right? They are going to exert impulsive force along the line joining their centers. So I can draw impulsive force. This is the impulsive force. This is the impulsive force N in this direction. This is impulsive force N in this direction, right? So the impulsive force are acting. One is in this direction, other is in this direction, right? So there are the two impulsive forces. M2 will exert impulsive force on M1. M1 is going to exert impulsive force on N. M2. So they are equal and opposite forces. They are they are action reaction forces. Now we have to find the velocity v1. We have to find velocity of mass m1 after collision, and we have to find velocity of mass m2 after collision. The v1 and v2 are the velocity before collision, and now we have to find out what are the velocities after collision. See this n 
Suppose this is theta. This is theta. So this will also be theta. So this n, one of the component of n, that is n cos theta, is going to decrease velocity v1, whereas this component of n, 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 the component of n, n cos theta, is going to increase v2. So n cos theta here is going to decrease v1. Here n cos theta is going to increase v2. Apart from that, it is doing one more thing, like you have one component n sine theta and that's going to create a velocity in this direction, velocity component in this direction and net velocity will go this side, this way, right? This n sine theta is going to create a velocity in the downward direction and the net velocity can be something like this. So, body came like this, went like this and this body came like this, went in this way. So, they are changing the line of motion. They are changing the line of motion. So, <coughs> we have to find the velocity as well as the direction of velocity. We have to find, sorry, we have to find magnitude of velocity as well as direction of velocity. So now, we need uh, four equations in fact. We have to find Vx, Vy over here. We have to find Vx, Vy over here. Now I will tell you how to approach this problem. Right. I will tell you how to approach this problem. First of all, you choose the coordinate axis. You choose the coordinate axis. Uh, you choose a common tangent. Choose a common tangent as one of the axes, right? You choose this common tangent as one of your axes, all right? This is one of the axes. You choose common tangent as one of the axes, and you will very well know, you will come to know why I am choosing common tangent as one of the axes. Call it x, call it x, right? And then Obviously, you have choice of, you can choose only, you have the choice only in choosing one of the axes. The other axis become fixed. That is perpendicular to this. So, the other axis is going to be something like this. <coughs> okay. This is to be your y. This has to be your y. I think I should draw it like this. Okay. That's your n. That's your n. Okay. So this is n acting. This is n. So this is the x axis, this is y axis. This is the x axis, this is the y axis. Why I'm choosing this as x axis? See. See the normal, this uh, quant, I can say the impulsive force n and this n is lying only along y axis. If I see m1, that impulsive force is lying along y axis, it has got no component in x axis, obviously. <coughs> you can't have any component perpendicular in the perpendicular direction. So, as far as m1 is concerned, you don't have any impulsive force acting along x. Or you can say there is no external force acting on m1 along x direction. Similarly, there is no force acting on M2 along X direction. And since there is no external force acting on M1 in X direction, there is no external force acting on M2 in X direction. So, I can conserve linear moment of M1 in X and I can also conserve linear moment of M2 alone as a system in direction of X. Right? So, before I do that, let me assume that the velocity velocities of uh, bodies 1 and 2 are say v1 dash and v2 dash let's say I call it v1 dash and v2 dash and let's say v1 dash can be written as v1 xi and this is v1 y dash j and v2 dash is written as v2 x dash i plus v2 y dash j right the so v1 dash and v2 dash <coughs> getting a point so v1 dash and this is v2 dash so these are the velocities after collision. These are the velocities 
after collision. Yeah, the velocity is after collision. I must write it better. It's very cold over here, right? Severe winter. My hand is not working. So it's collision, right? So velocities are V1 dash and V2 dash after collision. V1 dash is V1 x dash i plus V1 y dash here, where x and y axis are like this, right? Now I can conserve the linear momentum of m1 alone. I can conserve the linear momentum in which direction? x direction. px. I can conserve px of m1 alone. So what is the linear momentum before collision of body 1? This is body 1 in x direction. That is m1 v1 sin theta and that should be equal to m1 v1 x dash. Similarly, I can conserve linear moment of m2 alone because on m1 and m2 there is no force acting in x direction. So corresponding component of linear moment will be conserved. So that is m2 v2 sin theta is v2 x dash. Okay. Now in y direction I can conserve linear moment of m1 plus m2 because if I take m1 and m2 as a system then this uh, impulsive force becomes internal force right if I take m1 and m2 as a system both as component of the system if I consider m1 plus m2 as a system then this impulsive force becomes internal force and then I can conserve linear momentum of m1 plus m2 as system in y direction also. So what is linear momentum of m1 plus m2 in y direction before collision? It is m1 v1 cos theta plus m2 v2 cos theta is m1 v1 y dash and m2 v2 y dash, right? Okay. The m1 v1 y dash plus m2 v2 y dash. So I've got three equations. I have four variables. I have to find four quantities v1 x dash, v1 y dash, v2 x dash and v2 y dash. So I got three equations. From here I can get v1 x dash and v2 x dash. Now I have to generate one more equation and one more equation will come from coefficient of restitution, right? Which is v2 dash, v1 dash, v2 and v1. So I told you earlier also V2 dash and V1 dash are the velocities, component of velocities after collision of second body and first body along the line join their centers or along the direction of force. So it's along Y axis, right? So <coughs> V2 dash, the component of velocity of the second body after collision along Y axis is V2 Y dash, V1 Y dash and V2 is... Uh, v2 cos theta minus v1 cos theta. These are, this is the coefficient of restitution. So this gives you one more equation. This gives you one more equation. This was equation 1. This is equation 2. This is equation 3. This is equation 4. And just solve these four equations, you will get your answers. You'll get your v1x, v2x, v2, v2y and all that, right? You'll get all these four quantities once you solve this, okay? So this is the approach. This is a nice approach which you can follow, right? Um, if you have any other approach, you just let me know. This is how I solve and I can guarantee that you will get the result. You will get your answer, right? So this is how we are solving the um, oblique collision. I'll take an example. Right. See this question. <coughs> Two smooth spheres A and B of equal radius but masses small m and capital M are free to move on a horizontal table. A is projected with speed u towards B which is at rest. Let me draw a side by side figure also. Now this 
smooth sphere uh, A masses masses small m is moving with uh, u if you to move a is projected with u and this is b capital m which is at rest see in technical terms we call it a projectile and this one is target this is at rest this is moving this is projected towards b right okay so b is at rest and a is projected with a speed of u the informations are very important on impact the line joining the centers incline at an angle of theta to the velocities of a before impact so let me draw that on impact the line joining the centers incline at an angle theta to the velocity of a before impact this is a line joining the centers and it is inclined at an angle theta to the velocity of a before impact right if e is a coefficient of restriction between the spheres find the speed with which b begins to move find the speed with which b begins to move so first i will solve this part right so as i told you you take common tangent at one of the axes you take common tangent as one of the axes this is your x axis and this is your y axis this is x axis and this is y axis right before collision a was moving with u so let's suppose after collision after collision the velocities of a is say v1 dash which is v1 x dash i plus v1 y dash j and v2 dash is v2 x dash i <coughs> v2 y dash j now in x direction there is no force acting on either a or b so i can conserve the linear momentum of a alone as a system a alone as a system in x direction right and that will be what is the linear momentum of a before collision in x direction that is your m u sin theta so you can see this m u sin theta equals to m v1 x dash okay v1 x dash is the velocity component in x direction so linear momentum is going to be m small m v1 x dash right this is a px now i can also conserve the linear momentum of b alone as a system in x direction so see here your linear momentum of b as a system in x direction was zero in the beginning so linear momentum after collision in x direction will also be zero it means v2 x dash is zero it means b is going to move only along y b is going to move only along y and that's quite obvious because see your b is at rest b is at rest and exert a force in this direction so obviously when the body is at rest see when the body is at rest and you hit the body in this direction the direction in which you hit the body the body is going to move in that direction quite obvious you hit the you you apply a force in this direction body is going to accelerate in this direction body is going to move in this direction well the scenario differs suppose body was already moving in this direction and now you are hitting in this direction so it means when you are hitting in this direction a component of your force is going to accelerate the body in this direction but one component of your force is going to create a velocity in this direction see if you are applying a force in this direction one component is going to accelerate the body in this direction and one component is also going to create a velocity in this direction one component of f f cos theta is going to accelerate increase the velocity already existing in this direction and this f sin theta is going to create a velocity in this direction so you have the direction of velocity since you have velocity again we get velocity created in this direction the line of motion changes right get your point with the body at rest the force you apply the velocity gets created in that direction itself but when you apply a force uh, on a body which is already moving and you are applying a force not in the direction or opposite to the direction of velocity you are applying force 
along a line different from the line of motion. Suppose the body is moving in this direction, so this is line of motion. So if I apply a force along the line of motion, the line of motion won't change. If I apply, if I have a body moving in this direction with V, and I apply a force F in this direction, the mass will get accelerated. If you apply a force in opposite direction, the mass will get deaccelerated. But if you apply a force in direction other than the line of motion, in that case, the direction of velocity changes. Because one component accelerate or deaccelerate this velocity, and other component is going to create some velocity in perpendicular direction, and net velocity goes in this direction. So, in case of body which is already moving, force, if you apply a force, which is different from line of motion, like see, this A1 is already moving with U, and now A experience a force in this direction, B exert a uh, impulsive force in this direction, so this force is going to decrease this U in this direction, it's going to create a velocity in this direction, the body will move in something different direction, whereas B is at rest, the impulsive force acts in this direction, so B starts moving in this direction. I hope you are, it's clear to you, right? Okay, so it means B is not having any velocity component in X direction, B is going to move only along Y. Okay, now A plus B is a system. The impulsive force becomes internal force, so I can conserve the linear momentum in Y direction, that is, would a linear momentum in Y direction initially? It's MU cos theta. Well, that should be m v1 y dash and m v2 y dash. Okay. m v1 y dash and m v2 y dash. Now, I write one more equation that is for the coefficient restitution. I wrote the formula like this. These are the velocities of bodies after collision along the line of force. These are velocity before collision along the line of force. So here, the velocity of B after collision is V2 Y dash. And the velocity of A after collision along the line of force is V1 Y dash. Okay. And uh, V2 is 0 because it is at rest. It is at rest. If I call this body as 2 and this body as 1. So this B is at rest. And uh, A it is U cos theta. U cos theta, right? So I get V2 Y dash minus V1 Y dash U cos theta. From here, I am getting V1 X dash as U sin theta. Yes, U sin theta. You have one more equation over here. M V2 Y dash plus M V1 Y dash equals to M U cos theta. So what, what we had to find? Let me see. We have to find the velocity with which B begins to move. So velocity with which B begins to move is V2 I dash. So what I can do is I can multiply this equation with uh, small m. That will become V2 I dash minus M V1 Y dash and this becomes EMU cos theta. And now I can add these two equations and I'll get M plus M V2Y dash is 1 plus E MU cos theta. So V2Y dash is 1 plus E MU cos theta and M plus small m. Right? M plus small m. Okay. Now it says A's path after impact is perpendicular to its path before impact. Okay. A's path after impact is perpendicular to its path before impact. Means uh, A is going to move in this direction. 
Is it not? A is going to move in this direction. This is A. A is going to move in this direction. So let's suppose A moves with a velocity. So I got the direction of velocity of both A and B. I can also solve in the same thing I can do some manipulation but it will be tough for you to understand. Let me solve it for this problem. So we have the good idea of what are the velocities after collision. Right? Say this is uh, I can write this is as v1 this is v2 this is 90 degree so this will also be theta now I can conserve linear moment of body number 1 I can conserve linear momentum of body number 1 in x direction a alone I can generate some equation a alone oh, oh. so uh, in x direction the the momentum of a before collision was a mu sine theta and that will be mv1 cos theta the momentum of b alone in x direction is it was 0 initially finally also it is 0 ok a plus B as a system we can conserve momentum in y direction that is initially it was mu cos theta and finally it will be mv1 I can write v1 sine theta but it, that is in negative y direction so minus mv1 sine theta plus mv2 and I can get one more equation from E that is the second body is V2 and uh, V1 dashes V1 dashes I am interested in the velocity component after collision along the line of force so that is V1 sine theta in negative y direction so minus V1 sin theta in negative y direction v2 is 0 initially and v1 is u cos theta I am only interested in the velocity component along the line of force so I am getting here from here v1 v1 is u tan theta and from here I am getting uh, v2 mv2 so from here I generate one equation that is v2 plus v1 sine theta equals to u cos theta u cos theta so if I multiply by m mv2 that is mv1 sine theta okay, mu or emu emu cos theta okay so this can be written as mv2 from here is mu cos theta plus mv1 sin theta so I can put it here mv2 as mu cos theta so you are free to solve in your own way now what I am doing is not physics it is just mathematics right so you do your own steps don't follow my steps you can do it yourself okay so I need this result no? I need this result so that will come automatically so what we are getting is we are getting uh, I have even with me I have even v1 is u tan theta so that becomes mv1 uh, sin theta tan theta 
oh sorry this is u tan theta v1 is u tan theta so mu tan theta sin theta and mu tan theta sin theta is emu cos theta okay so i'll take this on the side so this becomes um, what should i write m plus m i will take this side m plus m u tan theta sin theta is em minus m u cos theta u and u will cancel out if I bring cos to the side, it becomes tan square theta as em minus m, m plus m. And I think that is exactly what we had to prove. Yes, this was exactly what we had to prove. This is your answer. So this way you can do that. This is the way you can do that. Right. So this is a good problem on oblique collision. Similarly, you can do any problem on oblique collision. Get your point? Okay, I hope it's clear. This is the approach. Just follow this approach. I don't think that you won't be able to solve any problem. You can solve any problem, in fact. Right? You'll be solving every problem. Follow this approach. Okay. If you come across any problem which you don't solve,